Hi, my name is Spiro Christopoulos and I'm the school captain here at Trinity in 2020. Today I'm joined by a member of the class of 2003 who has gone on to make his mark in the world of business. He began his journey at Trinity at the prep school in 1990, became a prefect and house vice captain as well as school vice captain, whilst building an impressive record across a variety of sports, academic and co-curricular activities. His strong work ethic and family values saw him enter the family business after leaving school and working up the ladder to make the financial reviews young rich list at the age of 33. His inspirational story started with him driving trucks around Sydney in the early hours of the morning to deliver skip bins to today being the CEO of one of the largest waste management companies in Australia. I'm proud today to welcome back to Trinity a great success story and the 2003 School Vice Captain, Mr. Daniel Tartak, the CEO of Bingo Industries. Daniel, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you, Spira. Welcome Pleasure. to our little Make This studio. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm going to kick off by asking it's a question we start. Uh, with a lot of the guests that we bring in, a lot of the old boys, about the school and how it's changed. You yep. started in 1990 at, at the prep school and finished in 03. Walking back around the campus today, what are the biggest differences that you see beyond the classrooms, beyond the buildings, in terms of uh, Trinity and how it's progressed? Well, it's, it's hard to miss the buildings. Uh, they've definitely changed uh, mm. for the better, but back, back in yeah, 1990 and through my uh, student career, that I thought our buildings and our facilities were unbelievable. I think today they've just taken them to another level. Mm. Uh, but it's good to see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of familiar teachers that, that spend their careers at, at mm. schools like this. Mm. For me, it goes to the culture of the organisation that if people are spending time here, it means you know, there's something good about the place. The feeling That's is it. good. So. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing. Good to see familiar faces here, culture, mm. sound, everyone I talk to, they only say good things about this school. So, yeah, and, and the green and, the green and white, uh, yeah, that, that's in my blood. You've shown yourself to have an enormous drive and ambition to achieve what you have at such a young age. Who were the greatest mentors or leaders that you had during your time here at Trinity that sort of helped shape you as a leader and as a great businessman at such a young age? Well, I had quite a few, to be honest. If I yeah, I'm spending 13 years here, but if I have to name one in particular, I'd probably have to say Peter Sherwin. Uh, mm. Peter Sherwin was my maths teacher. He taught me four unit maths in year 12 and also uh, was my coach five out of the six years I played at Summer Hill wow. and four years in the first 11. So he was a great mentor to me as I was growing from a teenager into becoming an adult. So yeah, he taught me a lot of leadership skills on the cricket field, which mm. today I still remember in the business world. It's interesting how sport has so much overlap with being a leader in the business world and a leader after school as well. You know, people underestimate that, but it, you know. it sure is. Yes, yeah. I think sport for young people is the first opportunity they get to s display leadership skills, and is very similar. You're leading a team, like anything else, a business. You're leading a team, and it's all mm. about how you interact with people and how you get the best out of people which yeah. is ultimately what makes a good team. And I think it was a bit unfortunate looking back at your record. You were sort of vice captain of um, CAS, you were vice captain of the school, vice captain of the house, but even those second tier leadership positions, they're, they're very valuable. So you had your fair share of that at, at the school as well. Yeah, and de definitely. I think whether you're second tier or top tier, you still mm. have a voice. And, 100%. And you don't have to be a captain or a vice captain to actually have a voice and be a good leader. You need to lead by example and show initiative and be passionate about what you do and your leadership skills, Yeah. Uh, follow through that. Agree, definitely, 100%. If you were to choose three things that Trinity taught you, uh, which have contributed to the person you are today, what are three things that you know you've used throughout your years after leaving school that the school sort of you know helped helped you learn? Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is, and a lot of people ask me why Trinity, why private school over a Catholic school or a public mm. school, public school. Um, excuse me, is that I think Trinity gave me a certain polish. Trinity gave me a well-rounded skill set of everything I believe I needed to take into the real world. Um, and I thank Trinity for that, and it's a big reason why Trinity will always be in my heart and a reason my kids will, will mm. hopefully spend many years here. So, mm. so Polish well-roundedness was um, definitely top of, the, uh, top of the list. Leadership skills. I got opportunities mm. to yeah, lead sports teams, to be involved in a heap of different activities, to have a voice, mm. to stand up in front of people and actually talk. Yeah. Um, all that helped me, helped me progress um, in the business world. Um, and the last thing that comes to mind is, is attitude and, and passion. It, you know, I was passionate about what the school was doing and I've, I've always had that sort of passionate attitude and it's helped me take that into the business world. 
and it starts at a school level in an organisation because at the end of the day we are just like an institution or a business so sure. you get those skills leading within this context and you can take that and adopt it into you know big businesses like uh, Bingo Industries definitely. Yep. I agree. In terms of relationships and friendships have many of the friendships that you started here at Trinity lasted all those years and do you still keep in touch uh, with many of the boys from time to time? I, I sure do so by yeah I've still probably talked to about eight to ten Trinity boys half of them either work for me or work with me now. Uh, my brother was at Trinity also three years ahead of me. His mates he's still with, and we're actually one group of friends. And you know, five of his mates work with us, five of my mates wow. work, we work with us. So we, we still see ourselves as a group of 10. Mm. Um, yeah, we still see each other daily, work with each other, bounce things off each other. The beauty about it is we grew up with each other. We trust each other like we're brothers. Um, you know, that friendship is there, that trust is there and you know, like anything, if you can work, make money and have fun at the same time with your best friends, well, you know, jackpot. That's what you want at sure, the end, sir. Sure and it's like a brotherhood as well, like, you know, we say it at Trinity, it's that brotherhood and it lasts many years. Oh, it's real. Yeah, yeah it's real and he's, he's a prime example, you know. It is real. Through, through what you do every day and you still probably talk to them, you know, every day on a daily basis. For so, sure. And work with them. Now the green and white Tartak blood has progressed uh, to the next generation with your son Tony now at the prep school in kindergarten this year. How important was uh, that decision for you to send your son to Trinity and uh, why? Why did you feel the need to send him here? Oh, I, a big decision but a very easy decision. It wasn't a conversation I even had with my wife to be honest. It was, babe, uh -huh. we're having boys, they're going to Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one, I still live in Strathfield and the reason I haven't moved out of Strathfield is I was born and bred there and live there and I want my kids to experience a similar lifestyle. Mm. We're down the road from the school. I, yeah, even if I moved to another area, I could never ever see myself sending any, my kids to anywhere but Trinity. Yeah, the relationships and, and friendships I formed here, just my contribution to the school, the fact that my kids can come here and go, well, my father achieved this and hopefully they mm. get inspired by it. And mm. yeah, I think your kids always, you want them to do better and be better. And, and I think yeah. you know, the opportunity the school gave me, I mm. think the school can give that to my kids. And yeah, I loved every minute of it. Minute of it. So there's yeah. no no reason why we'd send them anywhere else. And I think the only hard thing for for Tony and your other kids will be to live up to the sporting uh, attributes that you got to. I mean, first eleven cricketer, first fifteen well, rugby player. Well, they've been training from the age of two, so don't worry. Uh, they, uh, you've got them primed. You've got them ready. That's I it. sure do. I sure do. They play an array of sports at the moment, and wow. yeah, that's my escape from work, mm. uh, which we all need. And my escape is yeah, going to the gym myself and playing sport, but also you know, training with my kids. So it's fortunate excellent. to have a decent backyard where I can mm. get them into sports on a regular basis. And I can't wait for Saturday sport to be Wow. Here. And it'll be here, it'll be Tartak lining up against, you know, Knox and all those schools that oh, you I played. So it, it, it's exciting. The passion will come out again, don't worry. That's it. <laughs> it's uh, living on through the generations. Daniel, in 2015, at just the age of 29, you took over as the CEO of Bingo Industries. And just two years later, you oversaw one of the biggest ASX floats of 2017. This kind of achievement needed some enormous leadership qualities and potential. And having that title and that position as the school vice captain here at Trinity and a house vice captain, what do you feel you learnt about leadership here at Trinity, which helped you build uh, your business career and help in the big roles you've had uh, in the business world? So uh, a few things I learned about leadership. The first thing was, yeah, leadership all is, is all about how you, how you lead people. How do you talk to people? How do you get the best out of people? And something I, I learned from my father in the first 10 or 15 years of me being at Bingo. So I've been there since 19 when dad bought the business. Mm. Uh, and dad was my biggest mentor outside of school. Taught me everything I needed to know about the real world. And he taught me hard. You know, mm. gave me opportunities, but mm. really taught me the right way. But... And if I made mistakes, he would be he would be on me. So I think going back to what I said about sport, Trinity gave me the opportunities to lead, lead people, mm. have those people skills. Um, yeah. And leadership is is really the simple things. It, you know, we come out of school thinking leadership is, you look at CEOs going, this is difficult. Wow, what secret formula? There's no secret yeah. formula. It's all about, you, know, you need a drive, you need a passion to do it, but you just need to be able to lead people and talk to people, mm. uh, get the best out of people. Uh, and I, I learned that from the school. And then my father taught me the rest in terms of what business actually means. Um, mm. Yeah. 
And I think it's important, although this is a sort of school interview, it's important to touch on the influence that our parents have. And they made a sacrifice to send us here, but also taught us a lot. And even for me, with my dad, I have an interest in business and he sort of mentored me along the way with Trinity and it's a two-way relationship in a way. It sure is. My father mm. always made sure I got the best out of Trinity. If it wasn't for my father pushing me at a young age mm. to go to sport and to get involved, all these co-curricular yeah. activities and to, mm. my socks were down, son, pull your socks up. It was all those little things which my father wasn't driving from the outset, then I probably wouldn't have enjoyed Trinity or got the best out of Trinity. So mm. definitely a push from the father and that that constant refocus back on what's yeah, important, it helps. Yeah. Keeping you on path and sort of advising you as well as a, another key figure and mentor in your life. Definitely. In terms of business, what advice do you have for fellow Trinitarians that look to uh, take up a career in business in the future when they depart their time uh, here at Trinity? I think you need to have a passion for it. Uh, yeah. If you've got a passion for it and you're willing to really work hard and sacrifice, you, know, you can achieve anything. And you know, my 20s, I, com I committed to myself and my family that I would work hard in my 20s. I wouldn't go overseas and do what a lot of other 20-year-olds would do. I said I wanted to set myself up in mm. 20s. So uh, it was about sacrificing, and I sacrificed a lot. Uh, and I worked hard, and if you're committed and you've got the drive, I honestly think you can achieve anything. So, you know, mm. follow your dreams. It, what, I necessarily didn't want to be involved in waste. Uh, that was just sort of an opportunity that arisen, but I knew yeah. I wanted to be involved in business. Mm. And I think if, if you, you're CEO of a waste business, you can be the CEO of different types of businesses. Business is business. So if you've got a passion for business, follow your drive, follow your, follow your you know, mm. th those drives, and I think you'll get there. And it's an interesting industry as well, waste, um, waste management. It's not easy. No, but, it's different. You know, yeah, you've, you've fallen into it nicely, and also the family influence probably pushed you down that path as well. Yeah, so when Dad bought the business, I was 19, and we you know, had a commitment to each other that we'd work together. Um, mm. So I was at uni at the time and I actually left uni because I couldn't do two things at once. I did three years at uni and bingo was sort of starting to take off and mm. so I chose bingo but yeah waste and you know, I became an expert in waste after five or ten years and yeah. by learning waste from the ground up uh, and learning business from the ground up with dad I put the technical skill set together with the the business skill set that I've got today. Um, yeah 15 years later I'm yeah, I think Amazing. being involved in the business from the ground up helps me do my job a lot more than you know, a CEO that sort of gets plucked from a position mm. into an organisation. So, yeah, but I've loved it. It's about the whole process and that whole way through, and you've experienced that. You know, you haven't just been plunked at the top like you said. You've grown with it and you've learnt from it. So, yeah, it's I think another key feature. It definitely. It's, it's ma it makes me better at my job today, the fact that I know every single little part about why our yeah. organisation ticks. Mm. What makes it make money and what makes it, you know, why doesn't it make money and where the opportunities are in the industry, where we need to go. Um, yeah, and also it's self-rewarding and self-satisfying the fact that, you know, I've been through this with my family to see mm. a business grow from five or six people to 1,100 people today. Uh, it's quite rewarding. Amazing experience. In terms of business as well, touching on the ups and downs and the roller coaster ride yeah. that There's plenty of them. Is. There's plenty of them, but uh, I want to tap a little bit into the advice that you would have as well from your own experience for Trinitarians, not just within a business context, but coping with the ups and downs of life and also business. How? What advice do you have for them in coping for those experiences which will come along the way? Yeah, um, I think you need to expect them. So mm. don't think life is always going to be great. Um, you, know, you will go through your ups and downs. It's really how you handle those downs is what you know, is going to make you as a person or make your business. You know, mm. We're going through unprecedented times as we speak right now. Yeah. Uh, and what's going to define our business out of this is the decisions we make today, how we act today. Um, mm. So be prepared for it. Be well planned. Have a great team around you. But expect them and don't panic is the advice I can mm. give. And you'll always come out of it if you've got the right plan in place, if you've got a good business model and the right mm. people. You'll come out of it and you'll reap the rewards out of any hiccup you yeah. might have in life or business. It's about the people around you as well, that positive energy that you want to surround yourself and strategic energy as well. Oh, that's rule number one for me. Yeah, if, mm. if I don't get positive energy from the people I'm with, from friends to colleagues to anybody, I'm just, I, yeah. just, I can't associate myself with those type of people because I am positive by nature. Um, mm. Yeah, everything. Someone asked me, "Can you do this?" I'm, I'm yes. Everything's a yes yeah. for me. So yeah. the people you hang out, hang out with, are mm. really actually help define who you are. 
We have Scott Sayer coming. I don't know if you know him, the Wallaby. He's an ex-Trinity boy, class of 09. Sure do. And uh, he sort of said positive energy was his key in overcoming the setback. So it's a similar trait that you guys share and even a similar Trinity trait. You know, you go through tough times at school, but the people around you, staff, students, Correct. that's what gets you through the Correct. difficult... Well, people yeah, help you get through life, so... It's a reality, yeah. Sure is. When your family purchased a business, uh, you mentioned, you know, six employees, you had 100 bins, four trucks, and today it's one of the country's leading waste management uh, companies, one of the most recognisable brands in the industry. What do you feel has been the secret to the success of Bingo Industries? And how does it feel today even to walk onto the grounds at your own school and see your own bingo bins around the place in classrooms, the recycling bins, the garbage bins outside, and just seeing it all around the country? Yeah, it's quite rewarding, uh, definitely seeing that. But, you know, it's, it's been a long journey, a journey of a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifices. Uh, you know, the opportunities my father and the family have given me... Uh, yeah, my dad giving me the confidence of leading the company at the age of 29. I don't think many fathers would have given their sons that type of recognition and mm. confidence. Um, but yeah, it, it's very rewarding to see to see bins around the school from where mm. we've come from. But yeah, it all goes back to hard work and a, and, a, and a passion and a drive to succeed. And I think with the right support and the right team, and you've got that mm. drive, you'll you'll get there. I think it was really fitting because when I first came over to the high school campus and I started to do these commerce business subjects, they always used to say the CEO of Bingo Bins is an old boy. And then you start to see them around the classroom and even when you go and put rubbish in the bin, you look at the, the Bingo logo and you sort of think about, you know, it's fitting and that's where you could be one day. You could, you know, do so much and give back to your school. And I know it's a business transaction, but it's still that connection that that you have, and it's symbolic, you know, more than anything, it's a very, very symbolic thing. It is, and I th I definitely, and I think the fact that we are doing something really good for the world also mm. helps. So, you know, if I can help the school recycle more and, and be more conscious about recycling, um, I, yeah, I think it, yeah, it helps the school, it helps the business, and it helps the world that we live in. So, but yeah, I love seeing the bins here. Well, Daniel, thanks very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. All the best to Tony and your other kids coming through. And Thank you. I look forward to the day I see Tony or one of your boys run out for the first 15 on oval number one in some years and you'll be in the, in the crowd there and looking on. So I it's exci wait. exciting times ahead for your sure family. Is. Thank you very And congratulations. Much. You've got a wonderful business and you've been very, very successful. You've done well and you're a fine example of you know, a Trinity student making the most of the opportunities, uh, using his family as a great backbone and sort of progressing in the business world. So well done and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be Appreciate here. Appreciate it. Thank Cheers. you.